David, we did it. We hit a thousand. Our goal has been reached a thousand subscribers on YouTube. Thank you so much to everybody for subscribing and getting all your friends and family to subscribe. I'm assuming that's what you did, to be honest with you. I hope that's what you did. Um, if not, then we have a thousand independent followers, which also would be a very good thing as well, Dave. But uh, thank you so much. We'll chat about uh, the kind of the milestone, I guess, uh, on today's show. But more importantly, what we're going to get into, The Athletic put out a fan survey 3.0. It's the third year that they've put out this fan survey. Dave and I are going to go through it, and this is going to be the official Locked On Leafs survey. We're going to be handing in our answers towards the end of it. We'll see how far we get. We may have to make break this up into a couple of different episodes. It can get lengthy, uh, but it, it'll be a good way for us to put a bow on the season. So that's what we got coming up on today's edition of Locked On Leafs. Your Locked On Maple Leafs, your daily podcast on the Toronto Maple Leafs. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Leafs podcast, your one-stop shop for all things Leafs. I'm your host, Mike DiStefano from TSN 1050 Toronto Radio, also known as Al's brother from TSN's Overdrive and TSN 1050's Leafs Lunch. Joining me, it's my co-host Dave Morissuti from Sportsnet, also writer for the NHLPA. Locked On Leafs is a daily Maple Leaf-centric podcast, so be sure to subscribe for free. Wherever you get your podcasts from, you can also now check us out on YouTube if you haven't already. Please subscribe there. We just accomplished our goal of 1,000 subscribers on YouTube. Pretty big, uh, pretty, pretty big monumental moment for us, Dave. Uh, so thank you to everybody. And what does that mean for you exactly? Well, that means that the jersey giveaway has officially been initiated and I have it right here, and I can show you exactly what jersey we got in store for y'all. You excited, David? Oh, I'm I'm pumped. I'm Mike and I oh. were discussing this too because he, he he needed to get my kind of had to give the approval for the jersey too. I did. I had to call. I had to figure out which one do we want to go with. So this is what we went with. If it's if it's not what people wanted, it's all Dave's fault. Uh, we went with the blue brand new home sweaters. And as you can see, there are patches on the side. Our guy, <clears throat> Austin Matthews on the back. So it's this in Austin. We, we Austin sold out for an Adidas jersey, folks. We're, no, this, yes. Yeah, we didn't Austin go with the, you know, the, the fanatics. We, 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 we're giving you, we're treating you guys. Yeah, full stitching and everything. This is a legitimate jersey. Did not get this from overseas for 20 bucks. That's for sure. It is a legitimate jersey. And uh, one lucky fan who is subscribed to Locked On These Podcasts will be getting that in the mail. Um, we're going to, well, we still got to figure out a way of how we're going to do this fairly. Last time we did, uh, we did it, we kind of, we hid a word within uh, the next week's shows, and then at the end, you had to give us the full sentence. That didn't work out that well just because everybody was doing it. So I think what we're going to have to do is maybe maybe give out a letter, and it'll make a word. But instead of having to comment it on YouTube, maybe you have to send us an email. We do have a Locked On Leaves Gmail. Potentially send us an email at the end, and then we could pick from there. But you got to make sure that you comment saying email sent. Um, but that's probably what we're going to end up doing to figure out who we can give that uh, that jersey to. So um, so as long as you're subscribed to the channel, you are eligible for the uh, Austin Matthews jersey. Just as a thank you and appreciation from Dave and I that uh, that you're, you know, rolling with us each and every day. Because, you know, it's not that we just, we got to a thousand subscribers. We're getting hundreds, thousands of listens. I mean, e each and every day our, our podcast is doing well. So um, it's not just, you know, we're getting the continued engagement and support from you guys. So we thought we'd do something nice, um, to show our appreciation and that's what that Jersey's for. So, uh, yeah, there'll be more details on how to win that, uh, that thing for you in the coming podcast. Uh, we'll, we'll kind of figure it out. All right, Dave. Um, what we want to get to today is the athletics fan survey 3.0. This is one of my 
one of the more fun surveys that we get to do at the end of every year for Leaf fans. If you're subscribed to The Athletic, I've been doing this on this podcast now for three years. This is the third time that I've been able to do it. Um, and it's a good way for us to kind of put a bow on the, the Maple Leaf season in a way because it asks – Great questions. You know, uh, rank one to ten your your level of uh, you know how you feel about Dubis, how you feel about Keith, which player would you trade? Yada yada yada. There's a lot of great questions. So um, it's it's a really fun survey. I can't wait to get into it. But Dave, before we get into the survey, why don't we hear from one of today's show sponsors? And that is Built Bar. It's Rock Auto today. Rock Auto. Darn, it's Rock Auto. My yep. favorite. If you're looking to get some uh, some auto parts for, I mean, right now we're dealing with a lot of different makes and models for cars, so it's getting even tougher to figure out what type of parts you need for your car. So why do the pointless and seemingly intimidating questioning? Is your Odyssey an LX? Is it an EX? Is it an LEX? There's, they just add every letter and just makes it a whole new car. And while the person behind the counter orders a part on their computer, Choosing the only brand their warehouse happens to carry. So Rock Auto tries to give you the choice of what you get to pick for your car. And you can do it right at the comfort of your home or even in your pocket with your phone. Save time money when using Rock Auto. Why choose to spend 30%, 50%, even 100% more for the same part from a chain store or car dealership? Rock Auto is a family business serving do-it-yourselfers for over 20 years. They have reliably low prices for every customer, and they have everything you can need. Brake parts, tail lamps, motor oil, and even a new carpet. Go explore their easy-to-use website to find the solution to your other parts needs. So make sure you go to rockauto.com right now, see all the parts available for your car and truck, and write locked on in their how did you hear about a section so they know we sent you there. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need at rockauto.com. Welcome back into the Locked On These Podcast. I'm Mike DiStefano, Dave Moore City with me. We are your hosts here at Locked On Leafs. Um, we're going to do the Athletics fan survey. If you have subscribed to the Athletic, which you should be a subscriber. They have terrific, terrific content each and every day, uh, whether if it's Maple Leafs related or any other team that you're a fan of. Um, they have terrific writers all, all around uh, the, the sports world. But this is something that they do each and every year. They want to hear from the fans, and they compile it, and then they put out a story based on what the fans say through this survey. So, uh, Locked On Leafs, you and I, Dave, are officially going to submit our survey answers. and We're going to do it live on the pod right now, my friend. So, please bring up the screen and we can go through it so if you're with us on youtube you can obviously look at it as we go through it live um and if you are listening via podcast uh obviously we will also say what is going on and answer the the questions audio um as well so let's start with the first one here dave how upset were you about the leafs first round playoff loss to the tampa bay lightning First option, furious. Why can't they win around? Next option, meh. The Lightning are a good team. It happens. Or the third option, I never thought they'd win in the first place. Where do you sit here, Dave? I'm in the, I'm in the middle. I'm in the meh column. Ah, I'm furious, buddy. I'm furious. We gotta well, so, we gotta flip a coin, maybe. I'm furious about them not winning around, but I'm also just like the Lightning. I'm like I'm kind of in between. That's kind of like where I'm in the first place. But you want to flip but after six them? after six straight years, you're still like, you know what? They're losing to good teams. It's like, yeah, but they're also losing to bad teams like they did last year, the year before that. Yeah, and if it was last year, I would have put Furious. Yeah, but it's just it's six <laughs> years in a row, my right. guy. I, at some point, right. you got to see this team take that next step. And the fact right. that I thought this was going to be the season that they did it, it didn't happen. They didn't win around. I just want them to win around. So here and here, I will say this because what will likely break the tie is what I think the fans of our podcast would think. I think they would more judging by the comments I've seen in the uh, comment section. I think more will be leaning to answer one and fears. So we don't need to flip a coin for this one. By the way, I do have a Canadian loony ready to go to solve any of these splits. But for this one. I'm, I'm going to let uh, your choice be the first one because I do believe 
many of our listeners would agree with you on that one. All right, moving on. The second question in the athletic fan survey, 3.0 on the Toronto Maple Leafs. On a scale of 1 to 10, how optimistic are you about next season with the existing core of Austin Matthews, John Tavares, William Nylander, Mitch Marner, and Morgan Riley? It's now the Fab Five, not the Core Four. So on a scale of 1 to 10, David, how optimistic are you about this core? Hmm. Oh, this is a good one. Um, I'm kind of in the five to seven range. Mm, you're so you're not even that optimistic. I, I can't when I'm seeing what's going on with uh, the Tampa Bay Lightning right now, what I'm seeing with well, all these other teams, I just want to are the least able to do that. I'm not at the five stage yet. I'm more of like the six or seven. I think I'm at seven as well. Like I'm not, there are concerns with this squad, right? Like Mm. are, what are we going to get out of John Tavares? What, what are we going to get at? Like a year, another year. I just, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. Um, William Nylander, is he going to take a step next year? If he does, like if he shows the consistency, if, if Willie from worlds shows up next season for the Maple Leafs, I like their chances, but again, what what are you going to get from them? What are you going to get for that second line? I know that Matthews and Marner, they're going to be unbelievable yeah. just like they were this season, but what are you going to get from the second line, that second wave of that core with Johnny and Willie? Um, that's why I think I, I would give them a seven. Yeah. I'm, I, I think a seven is fair just because we did see Martin or Matthews actually do pretty decent. Sure, they weren't the superstars that we have seen, like the Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl. But Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl did not play a team like the Tampa Bay Lightning. You did see how they played against Colorado. They were not the same. Right. Although Dreisaitl was also not hobbling on one foot. So I'll give him that as well. And he still did end up with four points in the final game. But <laughs> yeah. I think, I think any, yeah. And Kelvin Carr had five, like just ridiculous. All right. Uh-huh. Next question. Uh, on a scale of 1 to 10, what is your confidence level in head coach Sheldon Keith? Oh, man. I think Sheldon did a better job this year. I think in the playoffs, he didn't do those crazy things that we saw him do in the past. I think he learned from that. So at least he's he's adapting. He's trying different things, but not going too radical. I'm in I'm in like the six to seven range for, for Sheldon here. Hmm. I feel like I'm a little higher on you than uh okay. higher than you because I'm in I'm in seven to eight range, so I think we can we can agree on seven then. Yeah. For for Sheldon Keefe. I, I think that he's a good coach. I know there are, are some haters out there who are not a fan of Sheldon Keefe. They want him out they want to bring in one of these coaches i you know when bruce cassidy got fired from boston the amount of tweets i saw saying oh good now go get bruce cassidy fire sheldon keith and we can go and win with a coach who knows how to get through a round saw lots of those tweets kind of popping up yesterday um but ultimately i I think sheldon keith this guy's only three years into his nhl coaching career like he's never He's never been an assistant anywhere. He was never in the show as a head coach anywhere, as an interim, nothing. The guy was just hired straight from the Marlies up into, first of all, went from the Sioux to the Marlies to the Toronto Maple Leafs. Give, I think that he's done a terrific job learning on the fly, learning on the job. And the way that he's been able to fill out a staff as well, bringing in Spencer Carberry was awesome. Bringing in Dean Shinnow, taking him away from the Carolina Hurricanes, was terrific. I mean, that guy really helped this PK go from 23rd to top six in the NHL, maybe top seven um, in the NHL, but a top tier penalty kill unit after Zach Hyman had left as well. And that's because of what the the coaches that he brought in were able to do with this team, the number one power play unit in the NHL. So I have faith that Sheldon Keefe can make some pretty smart decisions. Um, Hopefully they start to pay off and they, you know, going forward, they can start winning a couple more rounds or a round to, to show for it. Yeah, like I, I think he's done. Like, and this is also the hard one of the harder markets, right, to be a head coach. We have seen guys kind of 
lose their head a little bit. Like, you know, I mean, Randy Carlisle, Ron Wilson, even Mike Babcock had his battles with the media. Sheldon Keefe has taken, you know, he's, he's under, he understands what this market's about and he knows how to kind of navigate things a bit. So uh, he's not perfect. No coach is perfect. Um, but I think he's done enough where I'm not, you know, I'm not in the, where a lot of Leafs fans are ready to get rid of him. Um, I think, I don't think the leash is too long going for, I know it seems long, but I don't know how long it's going to be if it have this happens again, just because you can't just keep going to the same wall over and over again. Question. If by, let's say Christmas next year, if they're just hovering in a wild card spot, does Sheldon Keefe have that long of a leash where he can get through the Christmas holiday in a wild card position? Or is it that short where, you know, if you're Sheldon Keefe, if you're Brendan Shanahan, you think about making a move. I think if there's like red flags, right. With this group that we've seen over and over again, and they're just not fixing. I I think you could see some, what red flags would that, would that be for you? You know, like blown leads, like leads where you think the Leafs should, you know, be able to, you know, it's almost like that killer instinct conversation we keep hearing. Like the coaching staff needs to instill that in the players a little bit, like the responsibility of, all right, we got a lead. We got to tighten down a little bit here. Right. It's also, you know, if we see, let's say Justin Hall's back this year, if we see Justin Hall, Jake Muslim play again, and it just yeah. doesn't work. Like that's on the coaching staff. I mean, manager needs to, to kind of take those players away too. But it's also how the coaching staff deploys those players, right? Yeah, you, you don't got to play them. I know they're on the team, but you don't have to play them together. You can play them apart, and we've yeah. they've been successful, far more successful apart. So, yeah, you're right. Uh, when it comes to to the lineup lineup card, yeah, it, it, you know, some things you uh, you you kind of scratch your head at over the course of the this a season, but. Hey, not every coach bats a thousand, you know, even no. Jared Bednar, I'm sure has a couple of, a couple of things that he'd like to to change over the course of the season, despite having his team in a Stanley cup final. Um, but yeah, I think a seven is probably appropriate. Like we feel good about him, but still a little bit of skepticism. Definitely. Yeah. All right. Let's go on to the next one on a scale of one to 10. What is your confidence level in GM Kyle Dubas after four seasons in the role. I'm actually I, go ahead. First. Go first. I'm I'm actually a lot higher on Kyle Dubas. I'm in like the eight range. I know the contracts have constantly been talked about. I think Kyle Dubas was actually put in a terrible position with the contracts because these are contracts that should have been handled by Lou. By Lou or even a lot earlier, right? Kyle Dubas was brought in, he did the JT thing. He didn't really have time to get a lot of these contracts done. I don't could was he able to work on those contracts though? I I think they were only eligible to work on them after Lou had left. Um, I think the issue was more so like they let Lou go a year too soon. I like if I recall that being the conversation at the time was they should have let him stay for one more season. Get those tough contracts done with Willie uh, Marner and with I think Willie's contract may have been done, but Willie Marner and Matthews. Willie get those, was the first one that actually could have been done before Lou left. Yeah, so get all those three deals completed, and then maybe he steps away the following season. Yeah, I, I feel like that's more on like Brendan Shanahan than Kyle Dubas, right? Um. I, I think he's every time we've talked about, oh, the Leafs need this, the Leafs need to do that, he's gone out and he's addressed it. Right? That decor, I, I'm I still think it's a pretty solid decor. They didn't, you know, I'm sure they had to give up, you know, to get a guy like Jake Muslin. They had to make those moves. But I think he's he's addressed a lot of the things that this team has needed. Um, he's found creative ways to do it. Sure, there's still areas that need to be addressed. Goaltending being the main one, that second line, another. But I think he's done a pretty decent job considering the constraints of the salary cap not going up the way they expected it to as well. He's they found ways to make adjustments there. So I'm like in the eight range for Kyle Dubas. Um, yeah, I'm I'm 
I think also uh, in the eight range for for Kyle Dubas as well for a lot of the the same reasons that that you just said. It, it seems like every time there's a hole, he does plug it. You know, we we need uh, a defenseman. Okay, we're gonna go and trade for Jake Muzzin. Oh, now we need a backup goalie. Okay, we're gonna go and trade for for Jack Campbell. Oh, well, now we need someone to replace Zach Hyman. Okay, we're going to go and we're going to make some savvy signings. We're going to sign Nick Ritchie. We're going to sign Nick Bunting or or, um, Michael Bunting. We're going to sign Andre Kasha. Hopefully one of these guys or collectively can be, you know, what Zach Hyman was for this team. Obviously, there's no replacing that exact player, but you can do it in other ways. So it's like, okay, you got the offensive production out of Michael Bunting, but then you got kind of a a, a two-way defensive type of player and Andre Kasha when he was healthy, I suppose you went, you got your defensive specialist in David camp and you, ex- you, you were able to um, successfully make a couple of trades to, to, to do things. You brought in TJ Brody, who was a pretty savvy trade or pretty savvy contract at the time. Has he made some, some mistakes? Absolutely. The Nassim Kadri trade was pretty well a mistake, um, <laughs> but, it is what it is. At the end of the day, I think considering how short stacked Kyle Dubas is, when you look at the salary cap and the constraints that he has, I think he's done a lot with a little. And I don't think it's an easy job to do that. Did he put himself in that position by giving those players those contracts? Sure. I'll take that. You can make that argument, but the next guy is going to be in the same situation. But what if the next guy doesn't find the Michael Bunting? with the next guy isn't able to go out and make a trade to bring in a Jack Campbell, a savvy move where a guy is already signed to a cheap extension and he becomes your starting goaltender the next two seasons. You know what I mean? Like there are some really good things that he was able to do. He's got a keen eye on talent. He truly, truly does. I think. And um, I, you know, the fringe work, he's pretty good at, at, at making sure that he can work around the edges a little bit. So yeah, I think an eight, appropriate uh, appropriate for him yeah i think the idea of what other gm would have done much better like what a different gm could have done differently i don't think there's much that they could have done differently yeah i don't think so either all right before we move on to the next question let me tell you guys about betonline.net it's your number one source for all your betting stats and sports information find all the latest sport developments news and odds including this year's nba playoffs the stanley cup playoffs the Major League Baseball season, and of course, all the latest fighting news in MMA to UFC and boxing. Bet Online is your favorite source for all your sport wagering info, including live betting, esports, and more. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. Bet Online, it's where the game starts. Welcome back into the Logs on Lee's podcast. I'm Mike DeStefano. Got Dave Morissuti with me. We're celebrating a thousand subscribers via YouTube. So thank you so much to everybody out there, all of you subscribers. And as an appreciation, uh, we are giving away a jersey. That giveaway was initiated the moment we hit a thousand. All you have to make sure that you are doing is subscribing to Lockdown Leafs right here on the channel on YouTube. If you're normally a podcast listener, you can go and subscribe, still listen to it via podcast. If you're someone who likes to listen to it on the work, make sure that you still do that, but go and subscribe to make sure that you're also uh, eligible on YouTube. All right, let's continue with uh, the Athletic Leafs fan survey um, 3.0. It's the third year that we've done this on this podcast. Uh, the next question, will the Leafs win a playoff round in 2023? Oh, Yes. yes. David. I'm sorry. Yes. I, I shouldn't have done that pause because yes, I do think they won around. They were very close this year. They were within a goal in game six of winning around. Yeah. That was actually the closest they have been. I know they've been in a lot of game sevens, but I think this year was the closest they have been to winning around. They were a ref's blink during Justin Hall's pick away from also doing it in game seven. Like the ref blinks has a little cough in his You know, at the time that pick is happening, coughs in his elbow, misses the play, and that's a good goal. Hey, you know, that's a different game, right? So I I think they finally get it done. I really do. They have to at the end of the day or it's over for a lot of people. Heads are going to roll next year if, uh, if, if they don't get out of the first round. I don't care who the hell they play. Gotta win a round. 
Well, I'll come into the next question here. If the Leafs do not win a playoff round in 2023, should ownership go in a new direction with the team's personnel? Yes, 1,000% yes, 100% yes. They have one more year to get it done. And not necessarily win a Stanley Cup, but at, first, at least get through one round and have some success and take that next step. It, it's not a cup or bust year, but it's 1,000% a win a, win a first round or bust type of season. Um, so, yeah, absolutely. If they don't win a playoff round, I think the ownership – goes in a new direction and that may even go as high as Brendan Shanahan. Yeah. Cause all of it, it, he, he's, he's the boss. He's the one that makes all those decisions. It's the Shannon plan. Exactly. And it's failed to this point. I mean, the process has been there, but if process doesn't yield results, you got to make a change in the process, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. All right. Now we're getting into the nitty gritty a little bit here. On a scale of 1 to 10, what is your confidence level in the Leafs scouting staff? Primarily amateur. So we're looking mainly at the draft. Pretty good, I would say, no? I am i don't think they're bad, but I don't think they're amazing either. Right. So, at, okay, you go first. So here's the thing, right? We've had all these drafts since, okay, well, I'm going to talk about since 2015. Since the Marner draft, because that's kind of where Shanahan's plan has come into effect here. Sure, Marner's here, Matthews is here. We'll even put Willie in that conversation because Shanahan was around for that pick. Um, but you're looking around the roster. Yeah, they've made moves with like prospects and stuff, but they haven't produced as much outside of those guys that I would like, right? Travis Dermott. Probably that's a pick you might reconsider considering, you know, how that trade worked and other guys. I mean, Alex Brink comes to mind, like things like that. Right. But there's, I I feel like we're waiting for some of these guys to step in. Right. Sammy and Durkin, uh, Durkin chains. Um, I butchered that name. I'm sorry. Nick Robertson. Dear Arku Chinsev, I think is how it's pronounced. I, 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 I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm FDA. Just FDA. 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 You know FDA. Everyone, that's how everyone refers him. Like, where's the goaltending prospect? I mean, I understand those take long, a little longer to get, but I mean, since 2015, right? Six, seven years, you haven't been able to find a guy that can even give you a sniff of a potential as a goaltending prospect. Like, those are the things I put on the scouting staff. It's hard. I get like you know, it's no there's no guarantees, but I'm what I will say since 2018, I've seen improvement. You know, Niamh, I've seen like the especially the guys from Finland, Sweden. I'm starting to see it now. I think ever since I'm gonna put it, ever since Hunter, Mark Hunter left, I actually think it's improved. Which is why I think um you know, what's the, the what is your confidence in the level of the scouting staff now? I don't think it's asking from yeah. 2015. I think it's saying like now going into this draft, are you do you feel good that they can come out with some talent um, knowing that they only have they have a first rounder, they have a third rounder and I think a, a sixth or a seventh. Like they only have three draft picks in this in this class. But after what they've been able to do the last couple of seasons, I feel pretty confident. I'm giving them an eight when it comes to amateur scouting. I mean, you look at the last three years, you pick up Nick Robertson in the second round. Uh, you end up getting Topi Nimala in the third round a couple of years ago. You'll get Rony Irvin in the second round. And then last year, Matthew Nyes was the second round pick. Mm-hmm. Like they are finding some good talent, some diamond in the rough type players in the second and third round. And that's, that's just, you know, scouts doing good work. And this year they're going to pick 25th overall. I think that, well, I'm hoping that they find themselves a, a solid prospect at 25 that outperforms that uh, that that draft position ultimately. And even if you want to go back a little bit, Timothy Lilligren starting to turn it around. Yeah. Rasmus Sandin, I think, still has some time to to. I'm, I think he's a good player. I don't want to say has some time. He definitely has time. Rasmus Sandin starting to come into his own as well. Um, so they've got some pretty good prospects who are figuring it out and for the goaltending. I don't think Joseph Wall is like that guy could be a backup, a, a, a longtime NHL backup. 
Not a starter. I don't think he's going to be a starter. I could be wrong, obviously. A little time but, for to establish. But, yeah, I, I get where you're going with that. Right? So he's, he's at least an NHL body that they were able to pick up in the middle rounds that could contribute um, to, to their team. So I feel pretty good about their, their scouting staff, um, their amateur scouts. They've been able to find some diamonds in the rough. I think I'm giving them an eight. All right. Yeah, I, I think based on the last few years – it hasn't been perfect. It hasn't been great. So I think an eight's an okay grade for the staff. Um, they're not like the Tampa Bay Lightning, who are <laughs> I give their staff quite a bit more leniency considering the guys they have there. Yes. All right. <laughs> what is the biggest obstacle between the Leafs and a Stanley Cup? Ooh. This this one might be Okay. So the division in the playoff out. format. You want, to, you want to read out the options here? Yeah, so it's the, the Atlantic division and the NHL playoff format. Goaltending, defense, forwards, coaching, management. The curse is real and you know it. Like, I want to go with the curse. No. Uh, <laughs> no. But ultimately, it's... Because <sighs> we've seen Leafs, we've seen Leafs in past years. I'll even go back to like early 2000s. They found ways to win rounds. So there's no curse on winning rounds. That's new. That's new voodoo. It's got to be like, I hate to blame others. Like ultimately you want the Leafs to take ownership for their own woes, but like the division and the format, like the fact that they, they finished the year and fifth in the entire league with a, with 115 points and congratulations. You have to play, the Tampa Bay Lightning. Like, that sucks. They like, gave that's not a reward for a great regular season. So, yeah, I think that the, the way that it's, you know, interdivisional, because they want to build up rivalries for whatever reason, um, and the playoff format, and just that division is so freaking hard. I, I, that's th- That, to me, is, is, is just such a big hurdle for them. And it's going to be next year, too. Odds are they're going to play one of those two – Florida teams again in the first round. Good chance, at least. So here's my counter to that. Um, I do agree on some form of that because we see with the way the Tempite Lightning have gone through the last few rounds, well, the, what they did to Florida in the second round. Yeah, I think the Leafs gave the Tampa Bay Lightning their best. Their best in Tampa really, that was a real thing where they almost lost, right? They almost got out. They learned that something in that series, but we're also looking at the fact that there was two years where the Leafs did not pl- play in that format, right? They didn't have Tampa Bay last year. They had Montreal last year. That was a bit of a gift from the NHL and the Leafs squandered that And Columbus was a bit of a gift too. So I think, yeah, those two years, the Leafs were given a bit of a, a hall pass and they, they they messed it up. They 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 definitely dropped the ball on it. But you also think about Boston twice, right? Uh, I think about even Washington. Like that was a tough. That's a tough draw too, right? But um, I I have never liked the NHL's playoff format. I think yeah, you look at like I don't think Edmonton gets as far if they go through the Pacific. I think there are other teams that would have given Edmonton a lot harder, tougher. Uh, match up there. Um, so I was only I was only going to say forwards. That was going to be my my pick. So I think the defense has been pretty has been good was good enough this year. I thought Jack Campbell was pretty good, right? He didn't give up a stinker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Goaltending no. wasn't last two years. Goaltending hasn't been the, three years. You can even go three years uh, where the goaltending hasn't been the reason for losing in a series. They haven't cost the team a series um i'm i'm leaning more towards the forwards i i just I'd be okay with that i'd be okay with that because you didn't really get you didn't get enough from the depth this this offseason no. or this this playoff you, you didn't get anything actually from your bottom six at all outside of david camp had a couple of goals and that was it right after game four after yeah you know game three the the depth wasn't really there, right? Mikheyev wasn't there, Angvo wasn't there, Kasha. I I I give him a pass because of, he was coming back from a concussion. Um, yeah, I just you I don't think the forwards were good enough, in my opinion. So that's where I'm leaning towards it. Uh, Which is funny because look where all the money is. 
<laughs> exactly. Right. You can't bring in, you know, you can't bring in a, a Lekin in to get what, like how he, what he did for Colorado to get them in through that overtime. Sure. Another guy could have scored for Colorado, but they had Lekin in there because they could afford to bring a guy like that in. Maybe yeah. maybe police could have afforded it, um, but they were also capped out. They were also, they had other priorities. They thought well, they were like, good enough as well. Well, you can even look at the parallel between two older centermen um, who turned out who are like big pieces. Jason Spezza didn't give you enough through the playoffs. Mm-hmm. Darren Helm, he's given Colorado a lot. He had the overtime. He had the the winner with like five seconds left to send him to the conference final, and then won the face off and got an assist on the game winning goal in overtime on the Lekkonen goal the other night to send them to the Stanley Cup final. So it's two massive plays made by your depth fourth line center, who honestly I forgot was even on that team until he scored that uh, game winning goal. Thing. But Everyone. I'm not forgetting anymore because that's two massive plays that the depth forwards came up with. That Toronto didn't. Nick Paul, depth forward, you know, but third line guy, came up with two big goals in game seven against Toronto. No one matched it. So, yeah, I'll go forwards. I think that's uh, it's a solid pick. All right, one more, and then uh, we'll save the rest for tomorrow because I got like 4% battery left on my computer. It's definitely going to die soon. Yeah. And we're rolling up on 36 minutes. All right. How so, all, right. You, all right. How would you describe your level of satisfaction as a Leafs fan right now? Happy. I'm trying not to think about them too much, but I'll be back optimistic, resigned, angry. It depends when you asked me. If you're asking me today, which I guess is when I am giving the answer. Exactly. Um, optimistic? I'm... I'm more of like the second answer. I'm trying not to think about them too much. Well, actually, no, I am thinking about them it's, quite a bit. It's difficult. We have a daily yeah. lease podcast, David. How can you not think about them? Well, the thing is, I like, are we optimistic about them with the way that the goaltending situation is right now? Uh, Yeah, because the goaltending that they got throughout most of the year was sub 900, and they still had a 600 win percentage. So I don't think this team needs elite goaltending to have a like realistically to win games. Mm-hmm. I mean, Mike Smith brought uh, brought Edmonton to a, a, a conference final for Pete's sake. So sure. I, I think they could get enough goaltending to uh, where they can go and win around, potentially make a bit of a run if that goalie gets hot or if they find a diamond in the rough type of player. Uh, but ultimately, I, I don't feel discouraged. I'm not angry about the team. Yeah, I'm not angry. I, I I got I stopped getting angry about the Leafs a long time ago. Yeah, like I'm not resigned. Um, I'm not particularly happy because I haven't had anything to celebrate in 19 years, <laughs> right? True. So, and, and obviously, I think about this team on a daily basis. It's quite literally my job. Yeah, the second one, I was like, I think about them only for the show. But other than that. Well, the- I think there's a lot of people who are like, I'll be back in the playoffs. Like, there are a lot of Leaf fans who I believe are that way. Where they're like, you know what? Uh, you know, like apathy starts to set in. And they're like, call me when the playoffs start. We'll see if those guys get it done. And maybe it's even some guys to the point where they're like, Call me when round two starts. If the Leafs are there, we'll watch. If not, done with them for the year. Total wash of a season mm-hmm. of their Leaf fandom. I think there are some people out there who honestly feel that way. All right, we'll leave it at optimistic for now. Perfect. Perfect. So we're, perfect. we're almost about halfway through, so we shall uh, we shall leave it there. Um, I'm sure you, many of you will have some thoughts in the comment section about this. Yeah, let us know your your answers down below uh, to, to how you feel about the team. You can answer along with us in the comment section. That'd be fun. Um, we could read along and see where the fan base is at, not just Dave and I, but where the rest of Leafs Nation lies in a lot of these questions. Or if you have an athletic account, which you should, terrific reporting, um, you can go and do it yourself as well over there. Uh, but all right, that is going to do it for us today, David. We will pick up and continue this quiz or this survey tomorrow um, and get into some more stuff as well. 
Uh, but that's going to do it for us here today on the podcast. I'd like to thank you all for listening and supporting the show. You can subscribe to the Lockdown Leafs podcast on all podcasts and platforms and receive daily Leafs content. Follow myself on Twitter at Mickey underscore Canuck. Follow David at D underscore Morissuti. Make sure you're following the show as well at Lockdown Leafs. And go ahead, subscribe to us on YouTube. Smash that like button. Leave a comment below. And uh, give us a review on iTunes as well if you're listening Uh, through iTunes via audio format. That would be greatly, greatly appreciated too. We'll be back with another episode for y'all tomorrow. But until then, keep locked right here on Locked on Leaves.